Yeah, recording today again, Women Matters. We are in May already of 2023, almost half the year is gone. Isn't it incredible? I don't know how time is moving in strange ways, let's say. Uh, let's do a check-in. Monia, you are the first coming okay. in. Weather is fine, but it's the prognosed rain for the next week, so we don't have to water the flowers. It's also good. I have been informed on rather interesting developments uh, regarding um, consciousness. Uh, there is someone who is called Stamets, and he has combined various mushrooms, one of them of uh, TMC, so really uh, historical mushrooms, called Löwenmähne, the lion's mane, then uh, psilocybin, but the microdose, and vitamin B3, so neotene it's called, and the combination of these three uh, well, gets, I was reminded because Heidi said she takes some time now procrastinating, no, not procrastinating, doing too many things. Um, so it really gives you more energy and uh, gets you out of depression and things like that. And uh, we were thinking about using it maybe for my husband because uh, his uh, polyneuropathic development is really getting him down and maybe, but he is sort of hesitant. So this is about the situation in Vienna. Lilacs are blooming. Yeah. The roses, uh, Pfingstrosen, I don't know what they call it. So it's beautiful now around this time of the year in Vienna. Peonia, Peonia in Italian. Peonia? Peonia. Peonia. Yeah, yeah. I, I write it down. I keep forgetting. <laughs> but I never knew it, I guess. Yeah. So we have lots of tourists already, and I hate to go to Schönbrunn Park because it's swamped. And we have here in our district, which is about a, quarter, a mile away from the palace, or two miles. It's quiet and no people around. So whenever I have to go down there, I'm sort of in a culture shock. It's it's amazing, but uh, I'm really not getting rather used to being by myself or with, with my husband. And it's a matter of age, I guess. I pass on to whoever feels like talking. <laughs> go ahead. I'm I will go. Um, I, I never quite know what to say because it seems like things are just, uh, it, it's not, there's not a lot of news. Um, but anyway, uh, leaving two weeks from now for IEC. So I'm pretty busy trying to get my presentation in order and uh, a little nervous about it. Heidi, <laughs> wish you were going to be with me. I'm going to miss you uh, I'm sorely. Sorry, I have abandoned you. <laughs> I'm going to miss you sorely. Uh, what um, will your presentation be? It's called The Heroine's Journey, hmm. and it is um, an offshoot of The Hero's Journey by Odysseus, mm -hmm. uh, about Odysseus. So it's more about how women. Um, integrate male and female parts of themselves and that they split off from the mother and they go out into the world and do what Odysseus did in terms of all these trials and tribulations. And then they come back to themselves, their femininity, um, they integrate and transform, and then they return and provide that wisdom and, and uh, confidence and help to other people when they return, just like he returned to his family. So it's that, and I got to do, uh, I want to do breakout sessions. So that's the, I can talk about the heroine's journey. That's the easy part, but it's coming up with the breakout sessions that might be interesting to people. So I, I'm thinking I'm going to do three breakouts because there's three stages of the journey. Uh, when the woman separates 
from her origins and goes out, then her ordeal that she goes through, all the ordeals and the guides and the people that she meets, and then the return. So I'm thinking I'm going to have three breakout sessions to talk about that. And I'm reading, I, I also added to my reading list, uh, Entering the Castle, mm -hmm. because I looked that back, I looked through my notes from our meetings, and I came upon your suggestion, uh, Monia. So um, I've downloaded the book and begun to read bits and pieces. I don't think I'm going to be able to read it front to end, but I'm, I'm scouring it for little uh, juicy tidbits to, uh, to include, and I've enjoyed it. It's been a, it's been a good book, so thank you for that. And other than that, you know, we're kind of um, doing a few more things. This is the time of year where, you know, more concerts are going on. We went to a street fair yesterday and uh, that was nice. Um, it was weird for the first time that I am aware there was a police lookout. I had never seen this before, but there's like, there's Probably during the course of the day, there's probably thousands of people going to the street fair in Carlsbad. And um, so they have this lookout and it says clearly police, it's marked police, but it's above the street lamps. So it's pretty tall. And I'm going, oh, maybe they're like, I'm talking to my daughter and going, maybe they're looking for shoplifters or something like that. And she goes, mom, <laughs> like, you know, how stupid are you, mom? <laughs> No, they're probably there watching for shooters. And all of a sudden I'm going, holy shit. You know, I, it never would have occurred to me, although it should, because it happens like every single day. Um, but it was freaky because I had never seen that kind of a lookout. And I think she was right. I think they probably for these kinds of events where hundreds or thousands of people show up, they're now being a little bit more um, guarded about that. So that that was strange, very strange. And then we proceeded to walk around <laughs> amongst all the other people. So um, that's about it. Everything's going pretty good. Um, I will pass on to Hanali. Thank you, Christine. That sounds lovely, but also like you say, scary. <laughs> um, Yes, we were also at the vegan market yesterday. It was really beautiful. It was in a setting where there's just mountains all around you. It was in luscious green. It was just wonderful. And we were sitting on a bench and just watching. Which there was, it's in the, it's, there's terraces. And then we were sitting on one of the top terraces. And it was so lovely just to be out in the open and just to relax and to have something to eat and really not so much about what was going on in the market, but just to be present to everything. So it was really great. And I just came back from a walk on the beach, at one and a half hour walk, it was really lovely. So I'm really grateful that I had that opportunity to do this before I'm with you ladies. Yeah, it's been a very active week for me. Last week, Monday, we shared a beautiful session about living with ease with the lady who's translating our workshops into Japanese. And we invite, I invited some other friends to join us. So it was really beautiful. And the day after I was interviewed for the summit that will be airing in June um, about embodying our awareness. And I really enjoyed it. So I'm busy creating a toolkit that the people who will, will join the summit, they will receive it as well. And yes, there's lots of other things also going on, but what I want to share with you that I was really surprised by, I was attending a summit by MIT on Friday, and it's called The Shift. It's all about what's happening in the business world and all the research that I'm currently doing. And in, it was a four hours workshop session. And in every single session, they were sharing research of client feedback and it's big customers, big, big, big corporates all across the globe. And in every single one, the trust came up that trust is needed for well being, no matter whether they're speaking about performance, productivity, and whatever it might be. But it was just fascinating that, and they even mentioned at the end of the summit that um, it was incredible that in every single session, trust came up. 
And then I opened my Facebook just before I came here and I shared something two years ago and it said, trust attracts the best possibilities in any situation. So it was just reminding me of what happened on Friday and also seeing them presented to the world in such a way that uh, people are opening up and there are there is stuff going on in the corporate world that we might not be aware of, but there's definitely stuff going on. There is definitely a shift. And there was this incredible man from New Zealand as well. Was, he started the four day work week and uh, way before other people did. And they had so much success in New Zealand with that, that he's now sharing it all across the globe together with MIT, big, big companies, and how they see the benefits on the well-being of the people. It's just beautiful. I just think it's wonderful, um, that type of big business shifts and the likes. So I'm completed. I'll, I'll pass on to Heidi. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm glad you, you mentioned trust. I think trust is the most important thing we have to redevelop and dare to 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 trust. And even if uh, you you find out that people abuse your trust, that can be no, but still cling to it. I I really am committed to do that. But as my situation, yeah, as as I I think I said it last time, I had uh, this couple from um, Switzerland. And there's also Erica, uh, Monia knows her, but you both probably not. She unfortunately will leave in a week or so. She was here two and a half months and it was so beautiful with her. I hardly ever had a, you know, anybody here where I felt so free and so, you know, really good. And we did the constellation work and she also had to, to do the representatives. No? And um, that was really... Phew, I still haven't digested it yet. I want to re-listen to the things because it was about five days or six days, morning and evening. And it was really, really heavy. And I discovered things which I really didn't know. So the, the topic was the house, the, the, the property and the future of the property and what I need to do or to l let go or whatever. No, So in the, in the connection. And it was, well... And I, when I give the summary, <clears throat> the most important things, there were many more, but the most important things for me was that my father did put himself from my, between myself and my future. And so I was always hindered to really go for what I wanted to go. I always had to go all around. And that really, it, it, it resonates with, with, with me. And so we did a, a practice and it seems to be removed. I felt so liberated after that. That was really, really good. And the other thing which uh, Pascal, she is the constellation uh, leader. She said she had never seen in similar um, uh, constellations that the place here is completely free of negative energies from the past and also from now. So that she says she has never seen that. And for me, it's good. And she said it's all directed towards the future. Now we have to figure out, I need to write finally down my vision and then do some fly or something and uh, publish it. And uh, there are, every now and then there are people calling and yeah, I will see. We we decided that we want to be a core group of maybe four people or five. And only maximum eight people should live here. And the others uh, around or come for, for two months or something like this. No? But for permanent living, not more than six or seven, because otherwise uh, the quality of, of calmness and of beauty and of... of um, of, 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 of giving you the opportunity to really relax will be away when there are always people running around, no? And in this period, we were six, and it was perfect. I mean, six people was perfect. Probably other two or three would still be uh, okay. So we will see. And the process has uh, started in me, and finally I start to write down and this is procrastination, which I had before, Monia, no? when I did the first constellation in August. I couldn't start yet, but now I'm, I'm starting and I have trust that something good will come out. So. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<laughs> even if it will take some some time. Then they had I had a very strange experience last week. I had um, exaggerated heartbeat for for many hours, and they took me into the hospital for monitoring, and uh, they call it arrhythmia. So I have to figure out what what to do with that. And uh, for me, it was just an overload with stress. No, that was this constellation. The people. Then we did the the painting of of this room before Easter. Now we have almost finished uh, the kitchen and this. Uh, so so many things and the the love affair, which is sort of on a hold. So. Uh, so many things came on to me that I feel stressed. Oh, damn it, Lord. Now I stop and <laughs> you continue. Did she say love affair? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, before we started, <clears throat> I was wondering because Heidi said she learned positive and negative. She got positive and negative from this affair. And I will, I've been wondering if the negative may be also positive and what we experience as positive may not be as positive as we hope it would be. So maybe we could talk about this, but uh, I'm open for any topic Heidi you may suggest. Yeah, and I would share with, because you said trust. When I got to know this man, I from the very beginning I had a complete trust that it was uh, uh, arranged by the universe that we would meet, and I still uh, believe that. You know, uh, he may be a little less. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, I still have trust that in some way it will work out. Well, so or so it's really weird, you know what is going on. He said, no, he needs silence. He has too many other things, lost work and father cancer and uh, and everything. So he cannot, he cannot uh, be occupied with a new relationship, something like that, he said. Uh, but he doesn't answer on anything which I sent. So I find it really weird. But on the other hand, I got to learn many of my things, you know, many of the, um, the tendency to want to that other people behave like I would like them to behave <laughs> and things like that. So it's, you know, it's a, a open. I, I was talking about integral relationships. And in my opinion, it has already worked out because it has him also. I know that. But also me has confronted with, you know, with the shadows, with the things which are not yet resolved, you know. And so in that sense, it's positive. Also, I... I'm very uncomfortable with uncertainty, let's say. <laughs> Monia, is that what you were thinking? How the how the negative could be positive because of the the shadow work and and what it ends up mm -hmm. helping propel? That yeah, might be one of the aspects. Uh, how the positive could be negative in the long run. Well, I'm now very much influenced by the book I wrote about, uh, I read about Buddhism. Uh, it may be just be karma that gets right, that's uh, developing and is now ripe to, to, in, to be solved or to be, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I was not just thinking of my husband because he has always the need, had the need which he inherited from his father to be in control of everything. And now he has to let go. And that's very difficult for him. But I know what I can do in this context and that maybe it helps. So it's, it's just the things we think the least about that we have to learn in the end is my my impression so yeah i had i had to learn how to let go because i never in my whole life i had to let go somebody 
everybody I met stayed with me. And, uh, but when somebody needs to more room, and now I learned how to give that and not be angry about it or, or worried or so I really, yeah, but it, it took some time. It took lots of time to learn, yeah. Um, I'm wondering, why do we need to be in love? To be what? Why do we need to be in love? In love. Oh, I do think that's a normal thing. It, it's uh, excitement. It's it's uh, gives energy, gives a lot of things, you know. I mean, this worldly love, let's say. The other love is, feels a little bit different. But sometimes I feel that they are together in some way now. You know, it's not only um, focused on a person, but I can uh, see nature and everything in a different way. So I think it's a mixture of these things. It's anyway, but what happened to me is not like when I was 20 and fell in love with somebody. That was completely different. So, mm, yeah. So it's being in love, as I remember also, it's, it just gives you more energy, more alertness, more awareness of beauty around you and, and yeah. But maybe it is something you could stimulate without another person. Anneli, you are nodding. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's a very interesting topic. Um, my daughter and I often have this type of discussion because I've been, been free so long. I don't say I'm single, I've been free so long. And everybody's always saying to me, I've got too high standards for a partner. And it's not about that at all. I think what I appreciate was uh, many years ago with Barbara Marx Hubbard during Conscious Evolution Journey, she, she expressed it beautifully. She says that she said that we become more into our own wholeness, our own inner masculine and feminine, when we can we can really experience it physically, emotionally, sensory, mentally, in our own bodies, in our own minds. So the experience is true to us. Our need for being with another person transform. So that when you're with somebody else, then it's not that they that you need them it's nice to be with so it's 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 enjoyable to be with that individual but there's also so for me personally this chemistry is definitely there's definitely a chemistry there's a bonding substance that happens when two people are attracted to each other no matter what we call it and whether you want to call it love or anything else for me it must have substance otherwise it will fade and that's sometimes, in my view, how why some relationships don't last. But for me, it's also the whole thing that really came across my whole journey for me is that I have the strong belief that we have we are busy learning how to love differently. So that when we are together with somebody, there's not so much pain and anguish when we do decide that this, this experience was great and now we are going our separate ways because there's so much pain when the I mean, relationships dissolve, which is not necessarily needed. We can look at it in a more mature, in a, from a higher perspective and say, but we had this beautiful experience, but now it's time for us to go. But it usually doesn't happen like that. So there's lots of anguish. I personally, I, for myself, I love, to, I, I think I'm more in love with the idea of love than the falling in love, so, so to speak. For me, it is that thrill of it's beautiful, it's it's yummy. Um, but yet it's something that I, for me, where I'm in my life right now is very sacred. So there's for me a sacredness around it. So it's not just being with somebody for the sake of being with somebody. 
And I, I truly agree with you. I think relationships, we are, relationships are there for us to, to grow and to expand, to learn together and to experience together. Otherwise we'll be stagnant. But we don't, it doesn't need to be a romantic relationship. It could be a mental relationship um, uh, on a spiritual level, the spiritual partnership, spiritual relationship, or on a mental level where we stimulate each other. Because everybody's telling me that my expectations are having it all in one, I will never get it. <laughs> but uh, that's still to be dis decided. I'm still here yeah. <laughs> for quite a while, I think. So um, I do believe that's possible, that we can have that connection on all different levels mental, emotional, spiritual. And for me, what's really important is that emotion, emotional availability of the other. And if we look at where, especially men, from where they come from, they, it's, not a, it's not something that they've been, they've been conditioned to suppress that part, to be emotionally available to, to their partners. And I, I, for me, that is, uh, yeah, it's not just a nice to have, that's something that, then it's not a relationship for me. The emotion, if the emotional part is not there, then it's not a true, full blown, full spectrum relationship. You so said I'm you need substance. What did you mean with substance? Sub depth, depth. You know, that I can have discussion with the other, um, deep discussions about life, uh, exploring oh. existential questions, not just superficial. That's what I mean. Not just superficial. So it's not just about having even similar. Uh, or not so similar um, interest in the likes, but yeah, there must be substance. Yeah. I basically uh, agree with you, Hanani. I have um, vowed to myself that I would have a relationship which is worthwhile to have and, or, or none, you know, uh, uh, to go into these steps and so on, you know. But you left off um, sexuality. I, I hear uh, Monia always saying that she has, was possessed by Eros 10 years ago. And, da, 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 da. and I feel that. And for me, this sexuality which I left with this man was really sacred. I, I've never felt this sacred sacredness in, uh, in an encounter. And I would like to continue with that. So. <laughs> Or find it in somebody else, you know. Um, that's what I also found in this book, which made me think, because the sacredness is in you. And I always believed it was, it came from him when we were together, it was the energy. and But the experience of sacredness is in you and you can experience it, yeah, without him. But... It's easier. It was easier. It was like pushing a button and there it was. So, <laughs> and sitting in medication and waiting. For, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's what I wanted to add. I, I was going to say that um, I think being in love is uh, so natural because we're looking for that deeper connection. And it takes time to evolve that. So we can be very attracted to somebody romantically, but it doesn't necessarily lead to a sacred connection that has to de develop gradually over time. And, you know, I, when I think of the sacredness, you know, whether it's sex or other parts of a relationship, it's really about the person you in a way that, you know, you know that you enrich their life, that they're conveying to you um, how important you are to them, making them a better person, making their life more interesting or um, broad. Um, so it does take, I mean, you can get a certain amount of sacredness from yourself, but how we get reflected from another person, you know, how we see ourselves, how they mirror us back to, how they mirror us back um, so we can see ourselves and see our, our value uh, and importance to them. That, that seems really sacred. Yes, Christine, I completely resonate. 
what came up when you were sharing that was, I, I don't remember the woman's surname, her name is Elizabeth. Um, she wrote a lot about love and especially to be with another in love. So it's not just falling in love, you just the beingness togetherness. And it says some, she says something like this, um, I'm paraphrasing now. I love it who I am when I'm with you because I can be truly me. I don't have to hold anything back. I can just fully express myself and, and, and not be fearful of anything. That is me just beautiful, that you can be, can be fully ourselves when we're together with the other. And that for me, it's there's a deep level of trust there. And uh, obviously the container, the relationship is creating that. But now that I even speak about a container, I, many years ago, I was doing some relationship coaching and I used to draw a ship for, for the people, like a boat. And then I said, now you guys, this is a container. This is all it is. Now you're in the ship. Now if the sea gets rocky, then you want to get out of the ship, but you can't because the ocean is there, you're gonna drown. Now that the sea gets rough. So when we start to just, because sometimes the focus is so much on the ship, on the, on the container that we forget about the people. And once we just come, take a step back and see this is just a container for us to be together. Because we, we you know, we, we, we label it, we give it names too early as well. Sometimes when people come together, they name it too quickly. They still don't know each other. And then it causes problems later because they're still not mature enough, emotionally mature enough, whatever, in, in that specific scenario. But at the moment I show people the boat, they realized exactly what was wrong in their relationship. It was fascinating how they saw just seeing the boat as expression of their relationship and that it got, it's got lots of boundaries, borders. And that really when the sea gets rough, they can't go anywhere. And then they feel either uh, they're compromising or they feel threatened or whatever the case might be trapped, whatever the case might be. But the moment they just take the structure away and be together again as human beings, just being, before the relating part, then things change. And then they can't start looking at, is that relationship unbalanced? Is there power struggle? What's going on? But sometimes we, we get stuck on the, on the label, on the, on the ship. I don't know if that makes sense. This is kind of a, a little bit of a detour, but going back to what we had talked about earlier about trust. So as we were talking about that at the beginning of the session and, and Monia was mentioning Buddhism, you know, I was thinking that I guess a lot of major religions and teachings, spiritual teachings, emphasize trust and letting go, right? That's those two go hand in hand. You can't let go if you don't have trust in something. Um, and I know from the Judeo-Christian perspective, the trust, you're supposed to let it go and give it to God, right? We're, we're supposed to let go of things. But I find that uh, for myself in aging, I mean, it, it's a lot of lessons about letting go. A lot, it, it feels like as, as I get older, I'm having to learn again and again, little parts of me, little things that I took for granted um, and letting go of that uh, as I get older. So it, it's definitely <laughs> a big lesson uh, in life. And I, I'm not as familiar with Buddhism or some of the other um, spiritual teachings, but I know Buddhism, I mean, it's one of the tenets of impermanence and recognizing that uh, letting go is, you know, just something basic to our own human existence. Maybe Monia can say more about that. Well, to me, Buddhism actually is psychology. Uh, it's not really a religion. It's, uh, it has given me so much psychological know-how, how to deal with change, how to let go, how to, in theory, let's, let's put it, <laughs> I have a lot of 
books um, about Buddhism, but reading doesn't really help you. You have to practice it. And maybe I just uh, try to avoid, no, uh, maybe I'm enjoying my reincarnation too much to, that I want to reincarnate another time. <laughs> But um, uh, about the matter of trust, uh, in I put the book title in the chat, but it's also about uh, how you are safe with tradition, but still have to shake it and see if it's still solid or if it's crumbling already in certain parts. And in Buddhism, it was in particular that the women women didn't stop, uh, weren't allowed to study. Only the men, the, the monks, could study, but not the nuns. And this is also a topic of this book. And uh, it's called in in German. It is called uh, like a dream. So as long as we don't wake up to what really is, uh, we will always have difficulties with being because. Uh, and it's the amazing thing, uh, for the last couple of days, I have been trying to program my subconscious that I will wake up in the morning uh, invigorated and uh, regenerated and have happy dreams. And it works it's <laughs> because I had so many, many uh, nightmares or unpleasant dreams and now for the last couple of nights I just have pleasant dreams so maybe the subconscious you can really uh, talk to it it's very simple sentences and that's it so uh, this is something I learned the last couple of days and I'm amazed that it works that's <laughs> yeah did you tell yourself that before you went to bed? Before or when I go to oh. sleep. When okay. I'm in bed, before I go to sleep, I tell myself that I will wake up the next morning. Uh, yeah, as I said, as a, I, do, I say it in German, of course, because my subconscious probably is German, <laughs> speaks German better than English, although I just read English for the last years now. I've just been reading English books. Uh, but it's... Uh, yeah, and uh, it's because of I, I noticed that how uh, walking became more difficult. I lost some weight just to, but it didn't help that much. And uh, yeah, I don't still dance, but maybe I will start dancing a little for myself, <laughs> just to move differently. Uh, I dance a lot and I love to dance when I was younger. But maybe this is also something you just have to let go. Uh, but to differentiate, and you know what you have to let go, but what you don't have to let go. So that's that's a the hard part of it. Oh, cat! What? Which cat is that? The one that will have the baby? So no. This is Jimmy Schiefmaul. That's uh, five years old who has. Has a jaw uh, uh -huh. um, distorted because when he was very little, he had an encounter with a, a car, probably, and uh -huh. he also has no tail. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of animals are you collecting? That's funny. Yeah, the, the poor ones. So. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. The under the the chin is on the the, the teeth underneath end up in another place. And the teeth on top, you see. Mm. <laughs> but he is, he is perfect. He eats and has, he doesn't know that he is handicapped. Mm. <laughs> he doesn't tell himself stories like we do. <laughs> yeah, it will be funny when the new ones come, uh, the little ones, how he will behave. He will be angry, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Life is an amazing thing. I, I'm so I'm, I'm entering into into gratefulness uh, in the in the last months, and so really, you know, not only thinking about it, but it uh, sometimes comes really and takes me, 
So I see something, you know, maybe a rose or something in the garden, and <laughs> it happens like this. And I'm 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 so grateful for that kind of one. <laughs> and I think maybe this is uh, the last period of life, you know, that you finally arrive where you try to uh, to go there all the time and you read books and you thought about it and, and again and you try to do exercises and this and uh, courses and this and that and then it comes a moment and I hope it will come more and I really hope to uh, have uh, still some years with some really good joy which I had with this man it was so <laughs> igniting <laughs> Oh, maybe another one will arrive. I, I I think if the universe sent me one like this without me ever thinking the possibility that he could arrive in this way. So why not another one if if he decides that he has no time or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> Heidi, I have a sense you awaken something in him that he is afraid he still doesn't know how to deal with it. And um, I am really God. sure. I am really sure because I was as I was, and uh, I always went into meta language. I told him my state of what what I uh, am about, and uh, I don't think he, he he didn't see a lot. But when we were together, it was fine. And then away is like <laughs> away, yeah. So, and I I in many ways I I challenged him. I'm quite. I'm convinced, I'm convinced. But I think I wrote a nice article, a nice in my opinion, but Erica also says it's nice. Um, I hope I have put a seat, you know, where uh, where he can go from there because I saw the suffering in which he is, you know, so. And I saw his soul, I saw his soul directly into his soul and that made me so um, one, it was one moment, you know, one moment it was really, I. I had this, um, what I believe, encounter with uh, of the souls, you know, and that's why I, I still cling to it in some way because I think I never had such a deep moment with anybody. Yeah, so really, you know, yeah, I had the impression that I can directly look into your soul, and so I, I did what I did, being very open, very, very, you know, challenging, very challenging. And now he can decide if he wants to keep his suffering and run away from it, or if he can have some, let's say, support in going through it, you know. For instance, like these constellations, that would be beautiful, no? I mean, I saw the power of these constellations, which don't seem to be very known around here, so. Did he partake in the constellation? No, I invited him, but he didn't come. No. Well, maybe he is just scared. <laughs> oh, he is scared. I saw his fear. We had a moment when he really showed me the fear. It's it's never to go to the shadow. I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go there. So it's, well, it's you can't it's, blame him. You, you no, need no, a certain I do. I do you think I blame? I don't blame. Oh no, but you can't blame him for being scared. It's it's oh, just no, no. natural. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think I have shown him that he could do something to 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 overcome the fear and not being um, mm -hmm. not being imprisoned by this fear. Mm -hmm. So that there is a way out. That's what I said. If it will take it or not, and with me or with somebody else, I don't know. That's not that's not the, the thing. But you know, it's a little bit my philosophy uh, of life where I can I lay seeds and not with the idiot compassion, but with a with clarity. So and we had a nice time when we were together, so. <laughs> Is he Italian or German or? Yeah. No, he's Italian. Italian. You know, when, after my first Italian partner, uh, 30, 40 years, I don't know how long ago, I said, never, never again in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will see. <laughs> Well, you describe it very beautifully, uh, Heidi. It sounds like it was a beautiful experience for you. And, you know, 
Munya and Hanali are right. It's it was you who you know was able to bring that forth from yourself. Sure, he he may have been a catalyst as you you know interacted with him, but certainly all of that uh, sacredness came from you. Yes, I am convinced, but I, but I had moments where it was also for him. I'm also convinced of that. But you need to have courage to to if you you know. I, I, there was once uh, uh, something he said, which made me understand that Italians are still thinking that women shouldn't uh, shouldn't take the steps. You know. <laughs> and, Machos, machos. We know what Italians are. They are machos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought he's fluent in English and in France and lived in other countries. But obviously, the 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 uh, the culture is dominated. The culture of guilt and the culture you shouldn't uh, blah blah and you should. So, I I really do understand all that. But it was so also nice to to see it and to understand what it is doing to people such a, a, a restrictive culture no? and also to see with gratefulness how far I have come in my own development you know that was really it was astonishing for, for me you see I'm not uh, sad and, and crying all the time no, not at all I mean <laughs> well, I was uh I found in the book also what I know that in tantric relationships, which are lead to sacredness in sex, it's the woman who leads, who takes mm -hmm. the lead. So it's her striving for sacredness and he has to follow. And that's probably terribly difficult for an Italian. <laughs> terribly. No, when, when we were together uh, doing uh, in bed, you know, I asked him, um, he said, this is, this is, he likes to do it in this way. I said, but do you know what Tantra is? And he said, no. I said, that's what I imagine that Tantra is, you know, what we did. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe he will learn. He, he Who knows? He can choose to be on the to run on the surface of life, you know, or to go mm -hmm. deeper. And we will see. <laughs> we have lots of lives available for doing that. Yeah. Lots. So encountering somebody you feel familiar with, and most men in my life I have felt very familiar with although they are now dead or it's uh, I, I feel it proves that there is something like reincarnation or uh, living more than one life and yeah that sort of it gives me trust uh, that things will turn out all right no matter how long it takes If you had told me about 20 years or 15 years still ago in all these things with reincarnation and karmic and whatever stuff, I would have thought, psh, psh, psh. Mm -hmm. but I'm going ever more into this direction that I'm becoming convinced that there is um, a schicksalhaft, what is schicksalhaft, a fate, fate uh, encounters and that you, you have... Uh, Family, not so only family, but intimacy with other people without even knowing where it comes from. And I mean, with the constellation work, uh, the woman who did it here, she says she, at a certain moment she had an uh, opening that she knows what she did in the last life. And mm -hmm. so uh, I'm, it doesn't seem too, too much woo woo anymore for me. <laughs> so I can, I can believe uh, that ever more that there must be something there. Mm -hmm. yeah, both you and both you and Monia now said something that reminds me of some uh, East Austrian man I, I met a few years ago. And when I, I was introduced to him by a friend of mine from Finland, and immediately I had this this the thing I have on my back with my neck. And so I know you. So that was the feeling I got without having met him personally yet. I just saw his picture and I said, I know you. On a very deep level so I've, I've known you before 
uh, so to speak. And he was the one pursuing me, not me so much, him. And when I was in Spain, he flew from Austria to come visit me. But then all hell broke loose <laughs> because he, I didn't invite him there at all. But I was really fond of him. There was this deep connection, which I couldn't explain. And we had so many like-minded things that we shared and wanted to work together and all beautiful things. And when he saw me, he was in shock. So he, when he experienced my physical energy, he was in deep shock. I could see it in his eyes when we collected him from the airport. And yeah, it was then he was, it was as he was then out to, to um, expose my shadow in front of my friends there. It was, it was a very weird situation. But there were many moments where that deep connection was very visible on both sides. And in his work, he, he works with a lot of shadow work. And I, sh I just asked him a very simple question about why do you, because he, I saw him doing it with other people before that online, where he would just attack somebody about their shadow in front of other people. And I thought, you know, I, 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 so I took him on on that. And I said to him, I, I'm trying to understand that. Why are you doing that? Um, you can, you know, your, your work is beautiful, but for me to do it publicly like that in front of other people is not so good. And perhaps because I challenged him about it, he started to withdraw. And then he did some, still some weird things. He actually, on my birthday, he was there for my birthday. and. He was um, still saying he's going to come to South Africa three months later. We must do workshops together and we'll go and watch the whales together and all beautiful things. But, and then suddenly he just cut off and he blocked me from everywhere without an explanation. But I realized then that he had, he had terribly, terrible mommy issues uh, with the feminine. And because I challenged him, he was also not used to a woman challenging him. Uh, on, su on such a deep level, but it was beautiful. It was like that, like one you speak about, but you know this person, my body responded to it. And we were together, we were very congenial, uh, playful, and it was really beautiful. And it broke my heart because I couldn't understand why did you just cut me off? Why couldn't you just, for somebody of your uh, level of awareness, you could have just reached out and could have talked about it. But I also understood that there was also a cultural thing as well. It was way beyond just what was there, but. I truly also have that those experiences where my body immediately recognizes the individual. It's not necessarily romantic, but there's this deep connection with this individual. I don't know you from a bar of soap in this life, but I know you. I just know you. And those type of connections I treasure, they're just beautiful. And I've I've had lot, I've got lots of them. Um, and it's it's like you say, I did you 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 feel you come alive uh, because of that recognition of the other soul. In whatever fashion but yes um you remind me now of this man <laughs> thank you for, th for those of you who have netflix um tom and i just finished watching uh the movie lady chatterley's lover i i think there's it's probably been made into a movie many times but netflix has one out and it's just, I had never read the book. I'd never seen the movie before, but um, it's left. I keep thinking about it because um, the love she finds is extraordinary and very rare and exceedingly rare. Um, so it's a beautiful story, very sexy also. Um, <laughs> so be prepared for that. Uh, um but I would recommend it. It it speaks to what we're talking about, you know, finding uh, the soul of another person and how attractive that can be. And of course, as Heidi and uh, Anneli mentioned, you may still have to let him go. And that's the hard part because you feel that when you connect on the soul level, and I don't feel it in my neck, I feel it in my, a solar plexus it hits it when i see the person for the first time you know there's a it really hits me then i know when i will have to solve a couple of topics with this person now i know it's not just positive topics but um 
So it's obviously your uh, emotional body that responds, like my emotional body that, that responds to knowing someone. Yeah. Actually, we are never separated. We are always one. So it's, that's what uh, I could tell Heidi because you're still one on a certain level. Yeah, and you know what? I often um, sense into myself, and when I'm very much grounded, then I have the impression that I can sense the other two. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the messages uh, were quite, you know, like like when we were together, which I got there. But in real life, it's like, um, yeah, it's different. And so once he, he said on the telephone, when as soon as he, he found it strange, as soon as he cl closes the gate, he everything is gone. He, he is sort in another reality. And he says, maybe it's, uh, uh, what did he say? Um, not rejection, um, uh, hiding, no, not hiding. What is uh, the, the terminus technicus? Uh, Simulation? No. When you try to 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 defense, maybe it's a defense. So that uh, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. abwehr mechanism. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. when you are together, then it's fine, and then afterwards the head kicks in, and then it's all no things like that. And I was I mean, very it's he taught me many of these things, you know. It's about uh, but, protecting yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it's the opposite of trust. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. and that obviously in the presence that's not there. But as soon as there is a, um, a space in between, then it is there. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. It's, it's the patterns we have developed for a whole lifetime, yeah. and yeah. they change very, very slowly. But yeah. they do change. Mm -hmm. Others at 70, 80 years, Monia, if we make it. <laughs> well, it takes its time. That's it. That's why I'm still around. I have still <laughs> something to learn. Yeah, that's a nice thing, you know. I had a, a young man yesterday coming. He's sort of interested maybe to come and take care of the of the ground to be part of the community, you know. And he discovered not long ago this path of self-discovery and so on. And, uh, and it was sort of overwhelming and everything. And Erika said, you know, the good, the good news is that we never stop. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's in the same moment I wanted to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. No, life is interesting, completely interesting. I mean. Well, Christine, I wish you all the best for your presentation. I Thank you. A shame that I can't be there, <laughs> but uh, because I I did that, I did the hero's journey once for the male part in me, and I've done the heroine's party uh, journey, yeah, by myself for a long time now, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be thinking. I'll be thinking of all of you while I'm there. And uh, in the breakouts, uh, do you give them uh, topics, or how do you, how does it work? Yeah, you say you work on your ideals, or um, you know, I don't. I have no idea how many people are going to be there <clears throat> in this. So I mean, it's a little hard to plan for because I really don't know what to expect. But yeah, I'm I'm going to do three breakouts. I've got two and a half hours, so it's way too much time. So definitely going to need breakouts and then having, you know, having the group come and talk about what yeah, happened yeah. in the breakout. Well, we um, did a whole week on that journey. So that was really deep, yeah, and fascinating. How long ago did you do that, Monia? Oh, decades. <laughs> in the 1993, 92, 93, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I led one of the groups, one of the heroes journey, because it, I really, uh, Paul Review has a script on that. And uh, everybody can use it, so it's, it's free. And we did that 
and I, I developed it as well. And it was uh, fascinating, really fascinating, yeah. So Paul Rabiot is about archetypal theater, he calls it. He's dead already, but, he's, but it's, uh, if you look him up, it's just, uh, yeah, very impressive. And very, it goes very deep, very deep. What's the name? Paul Rabiot. I write it in the chat. Okay. okay. Thank you. Hmm, there is. That was a good session. And I'm glad to have seen you and talk to you because it it re inspires my my positive energy. So and my my laughter on myself, you know. <laughs> That's very good. You were, you. you were just enjoy it, Heidi. Yeah. Uh, Hanely, when you, will you come finally to see me? Yeah, so I've, I'm, well, I've, uh, if everything works out this time, I'll be in Italy in September. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, I expect but, you. <laughs> yeah, but it's beautiful to watch you share about this, this love experience. Um, it's, I can see your eyes glittery from far away. <laughs> it's beautiful and it's precious. So just enjoy yeah, it. It is. It is. And and I, 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 yeah. And I have a strong sense that this is not it yet. So, okay, okay. Whatever, whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah, I, I really felt in the last few months that I, I gave away the last clothes of Mark and I really started to burn the, the pictures of his suffering. And so I really, after five years, I thought now it's time to finally mm. uh, let him go co completely. And I don't think he, he minds. I didn't get any notice of, uh, actually somebody told me that he was sending me this man. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway. And, and Christina, I just want to also say, we will be hold the space for you while you're there and be the spirit with you. It's such a, yeah, it's such a beautiful, wonderful topic. And uh, yeah, just best wishes for you for that. Yeah, then, think think of me on Saturday the 27th, 27th Saturday okay. the 27th. That's the day. Will, will, will that be recorded? Do you know? I don't think so. Ah, uh, Picardo. Definitely not the breakouts. So that's no, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I don't think yeah, they're going to be the interesting part here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ladies. Okay. Thank you. Ladies. Thank you. Thank See you in two weeks, the other ones, and you in four weeks. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.